Okay, so let's start. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me uh, for this uh, ATEZ introduction uh, webinar. Uh, uh, we're, uh, during this uh, webinar, it should last around uh, one hour. Uh, uh, we will, uh, I will present you the features of ATEZ and we'll talk about some of the concept. And then from there, uh, we will do a live demo. I'll show you how, uh, uh, how to start ATEZ, how to create a small application, and uh, we'll, we'll show a few of the features that uh, we will discuss here. Uh, so feel free to stop me at any time uh, if you have questions. Uh, so, okay, so ATZ, uh, uh, so in this presentation, we'll talk about uh, the, we'll, the features of ATZ, we'll talk about the structure of an ATZ application, uh, we will discuss, uh, I'll show you the development environment, uh, the different windows inside that uh, environment, uh, we'll talk about uh, some of the modules or sub-modules that uh, are uh, built into the ATZ application. Uh, for example, task and test, uh, commands, IO table, and other sub-modules that are available. Uh, and then I'll show you the test executive, uh, some of the debugging capabilities. We'll talk a little bit about the internal library uh, and then we'll show you a, a multi UT testing uh, if you need to, to test more than one UT uh, in parallel. Uh, so, so what is ATZ? So ATZ is basically the test executive uh, together coupled with a software up, a development environment. It's all a one integrated package, and basically you can use the development environment as a test executive, or you can later on add a, a, a driver that can be used as a test executive. Um, in addition, ATs is a rapid application development environment, which means that uh, uh, you will see that it has a very short cycles for a editing, uh, debugging, running, and all that. Uh, uh, in a, it's also very similar to Microsoft Visual Studio, the environment itself, and it has uh, quite a few features that are uh, can basically use any software technology that is out there. Uh, you know, you can use DLLs, ActiveX, .NET, you can use uh, 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 love you. You can call all kinds of uh, external uh, uh, components, software components. But of course, uh, most of the development is done using the built-in uh, uh, language that is called ATEZ, and it's quite capable. Uh, so a little bit history about uh, ATZ. Uh, so we launched ATZ in 1991. Uh, it was 16-bit running on Windows uh, 3.0. And then over the years, we released quite a few versions. Right now, the latest version is version 10, or what we call version, it looks like version X. And that was released last year, and we're currently working on a, a newer version, ele version 11. Uh, some of our customers, you can see there's a lot of a uh, variety of uh, markets that we are participating uh, and selling ATEZ for. Uh, there's a lot of uh, customer in the defense, semiconductor, medical devices, uh, manufacturing, and so on. So. Uh, a lot of uh, avionics and uh, military customers as well. Okay, so let's talk about the main features of ATZ. So basically, when you start ATZ, a new application, you will see that it, it already has the whole framework created for you. So the idea here is that you uh, 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 follow the, the, the pre-made components or or uh, or holders for components that are inside the environment. So it's a 
what that does, it makes all your ATEZ applications, uh, no matter who wrote them, looks uh, pretty similar. It's very easy to locate the, the components, for example, test and uh, where procedures are and where variables are. So basically, you follow the, the, the placeholders that we have created for you. And then uh, there is a predefined process for everything. Uh, for example, if you need to create a form, so there is a whole procedure for that, and it's very easy to uh, follow application that someone else uh, wrote. Um, in addition, uh, ATEZ is a test engineering language, so it's very, um, uh, when you look at the code itself, it's going to be, self-documented and looks like a TRD in some respect. Uh, and uh, it also encourages uh, if you need to replace, for example, if you're using a DMM from one vendor and you want to switch to another vendor, you uh, most likely you won't have to change your test program that uses the DMM. Uh, so, and that's because of our uh, uh, instrument uh, and interface interchangeability. Uh, okay, the environment itself is also a uh, open architecture, and uh, you can see that it's uh, integrate uh, with all the different software components out there. Uh, you can use .NET, you can use C, function panel drivers, CVI, LabVIEW, um, ActiveX, and so on, DLLs. Uh, in addition, we also have a built-in support for all these standard interfaces. Uh, so, for example, if you want to talk with a, a RS-232 or another serial communication or uh, communicate with a GPAB device or VXI, all of that API uh, is built into the environment. So you don't have to... Um, uh, you don't have different API, for example, to talk with the GPIB interface uh, from NI versus Keysight, for example. Okay, it's it's going to be the same API from ATEZ, and uh, and uh, uh, the setup, which interface you're you're doing, is done from uh, some interface uh, configuration utility. Uh, next. Okay, uh, also uh, ATZ uh, uh, is always going to be backwards compatible. We've been releasing versions uh, every few years and it's always been backwards compatible. We don't change the programming language. We, we add new uh, features. Uh, but uh, we don't really change, uh, uh, and your TPS can run, uh, all, all TPS that you've written with old version of ATZ can run as is with newer version. Uh, the file format for our files uh, is expandable, and that way we don't, uh, we don't need to change it uh, every version, and unlike uh, some of our uh, uh, some other vendors that change it every version, we don't. It's the same file format for uh, uh, programs, drivers, and so on. Um, we talked about rapid application development. Uh, uh, you will see that there are many uh, tools inside the environment that let you, uh, for example, highlight a few lines of code and click do it. It will basically uh, run just those lines. Uh, that's very useful when you're developing test programs because you don't have to compile the whole program. You can try a few uh, small uh, section of your code and, and basically see if they work. Um, and the development cycles are very short. Uh, also, the, again, the, the environment itself, the, the ATs is a complete environment, meaning the test executive is built into, so you don't need to have different uh, software package for, so, for development and test executive. It's the same um, uh, package. Also, the, in, in 
the deployment of ATEZ and setting up ATEZ takes uh, uh, maybe uh, two, three minutes and you're done. It's, uh, it's basically one setup file and uh, it's, it's very quick and you don't have to install a lot of feature, a lot of different software components uh, out of ATEZ, except from ATEZ. Uh, once you develop your application, you can uh, distribute it. We don't charge for a uh, runtime. So if you have multiple test systems, you can deploy it. You can compile the, your executable to a, your application to executable and then, or li library. We also support compiling to a library and then you can distribute that. Uh, we don't charge for that. Um, Test executive, uh, we, we also, the ATEZ comes with a built-in test executive driver, a profile driver, which is like a test sequencer. Uh, we also support the uh, ATML uh, driver, so you can uh, um, add that. As, as you add those features to your application, you're getting all those things without writing code. Uh, so for example, if you need to generate your uh, a test result in HTML, XML format, then all you do is just include that driver and just tell it to, to save it at the end of the run in that format. Uh, we also have a built-in uh, fault analysis uh, that allows you to analyze your test result and see what they recommend to the operator what uh, what to do in those failures when those failures are found and that's based on the uh, fault history. Um, uh, ATEZ also support uh, multiple UUT testing. So if you need to test like uh, five UUTs in parallel or sequential mode, uh, we do support that. It has a built-in support to the test executive. Uh, you can also customize the environment to or the test executive uh, and give different user interface for different types of users. Uh, maybe have a touchscreen user interface or a mouse and keyboard user interface. So we have all that built into our uh, environment and it, it requires uh, uh, no programming. We have uh, screens that let you customize and create user groups and customize the menus, toolbars, and so on for the end users. Um, the user interface, if you need to create your own user interface, we have a, a, a similar to Microsoft Visual Basic.net. We have a form editor. You can create a, a, a forms and drag controls, menus onto it, set their properties, and the programming is done Similar to uh, Microsoft Visual uh, Basic, uh, you could do an uh, on-click and play some code in events and so on. Uh, we also support uh, different uh, source control providers. Uh, and we have tools for configuration management built into our environment. For example, you can compare folders, you can merge different files from different users and so on. So all of that is built into our uh, uh, environment. Uh, in addition, uh, number 14 here is the simulation. Uh, we do offer simulation support. You can simulate uh, your uh, application running with no hardware at all, no instruments, and you can test your programs and, and inject failures. Uh, you can simulate your UET and so on. Um, any questions so far about the uh, features? Okay, let me continue uh, with the uh, ATZ and MTS. So Marvin Test Solution is committed to a uh, development of ATZ. We've been doing it since 91. We have thousands of applications worldwide. And uh, uh, for us, it's very important to, as I mentioned before, to remain compatible, backwards compatible. We always want our users to upgrade to the latest version and have the benefits of the new features. And uh, um, so, uh, and then uh, support is done using our portal. Uh, we have in our website, there is a magic, uh, uh, it's called magic and uh, you basically log into marvintest.com slash magic and you can submit your questions. 
we also have a user forms in our website and uh, there is also a driver uh, a ATZ driver database that you can uh, look for drivers and and uh, download them from our website so let's uh, discuss a little bit in details about the applications so ATZ application is done is created from uh, three modules uh, we have on the we have you basically create a workspace and in the workspace you can put multiple projects each project you can place inside multiple program uh, programs are basically you write one program per device that you want to test so these are test program TPSs and then we also you also need to create a system file and inside the system, you're going to place shortcuts for different drivers that you're going to use. Some of those drivers are instrument drivers. Some of them are software, pure software drivers, like test executive or like fault analysis and so on. So these are components, shared components that you can add to your system. And then you can move them, you know, you can use them in various applications that you use. Um, so that's the architecture of ATZ application. And once you're done developing, you can compile or build, and then it creates an executable and you can run it as a standalone. Any question about this uh, structure? Okay, thank you. So uh, here's a, a little bit more details about the uh, application object or the workspace object. Uh, you can see on the right side, this is how the workspace uh, window looks like inside the development environment. So, uh, for example, here in the TS700 or workspace, we have a project called TS730. And then in the program folders, there are three programs. One of them is the self-test program. And then below it, you can see that we have one system file with multiple drivers inside. The drivers, they, they have a little arrow on their uh, little icon. And you can see that uh, uh, that's a, a shortcut. OK, that little arrow means it's a shortcut, means if you have two DMMs, you're probably going to put here DMM1 and DMM2, like you see with the matrix here. So these are shortcut to external drivers and they are part of your test system. So imagine the system to represent your test system where those programs uh, are basically used to test your uh, devices. So when you, if you run the self-test or the QP6640, this may be a UT, a different device under test. And then on the right side here, you can see the same thing with the um, uh, file name. So these are, uh, it actually shows you the files that are actually used for those uh, logical view on the left side. Um, what else? Uh, each of the driver system and program, you can expand using the plus. And then, for example, here the system is expanded and you can see that it has beyond the drivers it also have forms, commands, events, procedure, variable, and so on. So these are the sub-modules that are part of your module. And modules meaning program system or driver. So each of those modules, they have sub-modules. And you can see here the list, it shows you what the sub-modules are. So for example, a program has test forms, forms where you write your user interface if you have a a specific program user interface. You can create commands. I'll explain in what commands are. You can respond to events here. What are events, for example, on any program or on any test or on end test? These are events that are predefined for your um, module and you can put some code there to respond to a, a separate event in, in the program system or driver level. So if you wanted, for example, uh, to have a, a driver that every at the end of the test, it saves the, uh, the, the, the result to Excel spreadsheet. So you can probably create a driver, call it Excel 
a test result or something like that. And in on end test, you basically write the test result to the to that uh, spreadsheet and so on. So the, it's kind of the events is encouraging reusable, uh, creating reusable components, and they're used quite often. In addition, we also have procedure, placeholder for procedure for variables. These are program variable or system variables or driver variables. It, data types, uh, for example, if you have a structure or a num and so on. And then libraries, that's where you put, the, uh, you insert some of the external components, for example, DLLs or ActiveX or .NET, they can be defined here under libraries, imported, then ATs, it will display their um, content as uh, and, and let you call those uh, classes or object or functions. Okay, any question about the workspace object? Okay. Okay, so here's a slide talking about the ATZ architecture. So, so basically the development environment is this side of the, of the screen, the left side. And then you can see that uh, uh, we have a, inside the development environment, you create workspace, projects, programs, system driver, and so on. And then you can run them with the start command without building an executable, just, and basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna create P code in memory. And then that P code is gonna get executed here on the right side in the ATZ runtime. Uh, so the ATZ runtime is capable of a P code execution. It's very similar to .NET, the way it's been uh, structured that you uh, compile it created uh, executable with P code, and then you run it from uh, uh, using the .NET runtime environment. So, uh, so in addition to running it in memory, that way you don't need to uh, create executable. You just run it on the fly, and it is it has a just-in-time compiler, so it just compiles the modules that you need uh, uh, to uh, in order to run the parts that you're running. So for example, if you're just running a test, it's not gonna to need to compile all your program. You just need to compile the test and all the procedures that are called from the, within that test. So that's why it's, it's very rapid to, to execute from the debugging environment, from the development environment. In addition, you can also select to build your code and then it creates an executable and that executable also gets to run uh, in the runtime environment. So uh, in addition, what else uh, your application need beyond the ATZ runtime? It uh, sometimes use external components like DLL, ActiveX, and .NET, or maybe LoveView and so on, some other component, external software components. So those has to be distributed along with your executable. Any questions? Okay, and uh, let's skip those a uh, few slides. I'll jump here to task and test. And uh, so basically uh, how your test program is gonna look like. So once you uh, created the test, uh, it will, the test editor will look like this. And basically it has, a, it's divided by task, which is groups of tests. So a task is like a logical partition of your program. Uh, so you can see here in this task, power test, we have two tests, 3.3 volt supply and five volt supply test. And these are min max tasks, meaning they have a min and max, as you can see on the bottom of the screen. Um, um, you can see the properties of that, that test that is highlighted a minimum and so on. And then here you can see every test has an area where you can type description uh, that could be taken from a TRD test requirement document if you have, or you can just type what you're doing in the test. And you can also uh, put comments here, like here you can see the comments are green. And, and then the code itself is a combination of eight easy commands 
that looks like in English. So for example, relay is the name of the driver that we're going to use. And then you hit the, and then close. And then 13 is probably the number of relay. And then in addition to the command statement, you can also put a statement like in vb.net where you can just type for or while or if and so on. So you can see here we're taking, uh, we're looping, taking 10 measurements into the same variable actually and so on. It, it's not, this program doesn't make much sense, but it just show you that uh, how the code will look like and it's pretty readable. So you can see we're closing a relay, we're setting the DMM to measure DC, we're taking the measurement and so on. And then uh, another thing with ATEZ, you can see that all the keywords are highlighted with blue. So test result is the internal variable that you can use to set the, your uh, result. Uh, when you write your test, you have the responsibility to, to set the test result uh, a value. So ATEZ will know uh, what was the result and it will use that when it prints to the test log and calculate if the test fail or, or pass. And then in addition, the test properties, uh, you can, it, it uses them to evaluate the test. All of those properties can also be set at runtime using an um, internal um, library or internal classes. Um, as you can see here, when you type relay and you hit the space bar, uh, ATZ has a code completion. So you don't really have to remember all the commands. So as soon as you hit the space bar, it will show the drop list and you basically select the commands that you want to use. Uh, okay, so at runtime, every one of those tests will have a, a result line in the test log and then it will have a status uh, based on the test result. The test result is compare against the min and the max and then it determine if it, the test is pass or fail or error if some runtime occurred, for example, instrument not responding or something like that, or no result if just that test is just done to, to do an action and not uh, generate test result, not uh, generate fail, fail or pass. Okay, so here we're gonna talk a little bit about the eight easy commands. So what are ATZ commands? So these are basically user-defined statements that you are creating. Uh, all of those uh, ATZ drivers have uh, commands that basically let you use those, uh, the, or program the instrument that that driver is used to uh, control. So for example, you can see here, this is a driver for HP 34401A. And that's a, a Keysight uh, or a HP or Agilent uh, DMM. And you can see the, the, the commands are defined here. So we have a set, get, measure, self-test, and so on. And if you expand the set, you're probably going to see set function and set reading rate or so on and so on. Uh, so each one of those commands are linked attached to a procedure or another feature that ATZ has is called IO table. And, and those are, um, so basically when you say a DMM measure, it calls this IO table in this case. And IO table, think about it like a procedure that communicate with a standard bus like GPAV or RS-232 or USB or a TCP IP if it's LXI and so on. So what we did is we kind of made the sending and receiving from the instrument very, um, similar and the code that you write is independent, whether it's a serial communication or USB and so on. So, uh, but, uh, so here's an example of commands. You can see here relay close 13 and taking the measurement to test result. You can, uh, so these are driver command. You can also place uh, commands in the system and in the program. Uh, the programming, uh, for example, system command maybe will bundle those two commands like relay, close, and measure to one function. And then you can, uh, it can create a reusable code so you won't have to call close and measure every time. Instead, you just call system measure, volt DC, and then, so maybe that command would set up the DMM to, me to DC measurement will close the relay and get back you the result. So instead of, it's like a procedure. 
save you. So again, when you build your test system, you're going to have a lot of those system commands uh, to avoid uh, writing a lot of code and create more reusable code. Uh, in the program level, you might want to put uh, commands that actually describe what you're doing. For example, if you're testing an engine and you want to power it on, you can create a command that looks like this, program turn engine power on or something like that. Any question about commands? So, uh, so here we're talking about the same thing, same idea. And you can see we're talking about the, the system command and the and uh, this one also, you can actually put the names of the pins below. Uh, so it will be system measure, DMM, volt DC, and J113. And inside, it will call that. And, and so on. So, um, OK, so what's the benefit of using commands over procedures? So basically, if you write programs in C or in, or in um, uh, Visual Basic or, uh, you know, even Love You, you basically call procedures. Or you call classes, object with a procedure or functions or and so on. Uh, the benefit here is that they are very easy to use because you basically, all you need to know is the name of the instrument that you uh, want to program and you just type the name relay and then hit the space and then you follow the, the code completion. Another thing is that uh, they're very readable. You can read the program, and it looks like a test requirement document, kind of self-documenting. We have uh, many of our customers would submit their uh, program listing as a documentation for what their test program is doing. Uh, no further documentation is required uh, uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, also, the you can use the commands to emulate other languages. Um, uh, for example, if you have an old uh, Atlas program, you're con converting it to ATZ, it will look very uh, similar. Uh, we also are uh, hiding all the technology. So the program basically, if it uses commands, it's, it's basically instrument independent. You don't really see anything about HP 34401 or Keysight 34401. You, all you see is DMM measure, and you don't really know what type of DMM it is. You can exchange that driver to another DMM driver, and then your program is going to run as is. So we're hiding all the implementation of the uh, driver from uh, the program, and that's a benefit because you it's not dependent on, on any technology. So, and in the back, you know, in the driver itself, you can use DLL, you can use IPI, you can use .NET, and so on. So, it's hiding all that from the test engineer. Um, okay, so any question about pro commands? Okay, can someone indicate that you can hear me because... Hello? Yep, we can still hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so okay, so what other sub modules we have? So we talked about test and we talked about commands. So in addition, we also have IO tables that are basically a way for you to communicate with an instrument through a standard bus. And you will see later on that uh, if you're writing your own driver and uh, to an instrument, that instrument has different interfaces in the back. It has USB and maybe uh, RS232 or LXI, TCP IP. You have to write only one driver. It is, it takes care of the different uh, networks or, or protocols, serial bus or that you are using. So if you write one driver and you say, okay, that driver support LXI, support GPIB and so on. And ATZ takes care of all the different um, communication uh, um, differences between the, the these flavors. Um, in addition, we also have a way to define procedure and functions. They look like any other language procedure. They have parameters and return values and so on and local variables. 
Uh, we talked about, about events, and here is an example of some of the events that are available. For example, we have on init. That will be the first event when you start running your program. So every driver can respond to that on init. Maybe it initializes itself, or maybe it has to do something to, uh, to start uh, on init system. After all the in instruments are initialized, you can that event is get called before the program gets called. And then on init program, on init test, beginning of each test, this is called on end test after each test. When you call abort or, uh, or you have a runtime error, you can use those to um, respond to those events. Um, okay, so other things that we have is we have a way to define forms. Uh, Again, discuss that. You, the forms are programming uh, is done using event programming. So basically, you select an event that is comes with your control that you use. For example, if it's a button, so it might have an on-click event, and you can write your code there, what to do when the event is clicked, when the button is clicked. Uh, you can use the ATs. It comes with a bunch of uh, internal controls. And these are standard controls that you get with Windows. Uh, in addition, we have some of the in, uh, internal controls are like a grid and chart, uh, not grid, chart, uh, sliders, switches, and knobs, and all that types of control. But you can also use external controls. We do support .NET controls. So basically, you can use any of the .NET, and every Windows has a bunch of them. Uh, built into the uh, system. So, if, for example, you want to use a grid or a tree view or a list view, you can use them. And we also support ActiveX controls as well. Um, forms also have variables, procedure, and events, and the, and the of, co of course the, their design is done graphically. Uh, what other things a module has? It has more variables and types. We discussed that and libraries. ATZ can use DLLs. It actually can read header files and import that and define the DLL function or the types within that DLL, like a structure that it uses. It can also read ActiveX type using type libraries and or .NET assemblies. Those do not require any definition. All you do is just select what you want to use. Uh, DLLs, they do require some uh, importing of header files and, and in order to tell it easy how the, these functions look like. Um, okay. Uh, next, uh, here's an example of IO table. So um, you can see that it's, it's pretty much uh, the measure here is implemented and we are sending the instrument read question mark, and it doesn't tell you here what we do, uh, the protocol that we use that's gone through the configuration. And then we send and receive, and then we parse the data and put it in some uh, uh, parameter back to the program. Okay, so here's a picture of our development environment. You can see it has the workspace window here on the left, and then, uh, Global stack, when you're running, it's populated. Uh, maybe a monitor, if you want to monitor the, uh, the uh, communication from different buses, it shows you that. We have a test log here. Uh, and then here you can see there is a program open with all the different sub-module test forms and events and so on. And these are the tasks and tests. And the code itself that relate to that particular test that is highlighted. Any question about this? And then here on the bottom, you can see uh, there is a, a, a form created, and you can see on load event showing, and some properties as well. And you can see toolbars here for placing controls, standard controls. OK. Okay. Um, okay. Some of the debugging uh, capabilities you can see: start, reset, and so on. Uh, a few uh, uh, conditions to set. You want to stop every task or every test. 
or maybe pause when the task or test failed, uh, log what you want to log, and uh, there's also some of the immediate commands like task it, test it, just to run one test. Instead of running the whole program, do it, loop it, and so on, step over. If you want to debug uh, the code itself, you can put breakpoints. And then you, it's pretty much like any other development environment, I would say. OK, uh, some of the other deb debugging windows, you can see we have a call stack, watch, debug window, monitor, threads. ATZ support multi-threading applications where you can create threads and so on. Here's an example of the monitor window. It shows you the communication from uh, ATZ to a GPIB with this address. It's board one, primary address one, and so on. Send and see what's the time and so on. Okay, other features with uh, a little bit configuration, but uh, you know, uh, you can limit access for various users. You can have, a, as soon as you start ATEasy, to have a login screen. And based on the user that logged in, ATEasy limits the capabilities of the users. And here you can configure the different capabilities and so on. Won't get into too much information. Here is another screen, show you a little bit about source control. So it is allow you to check in, check out to different source control providers. And uh, we support, uh, you know, there's a list here of what we support, uh, Team Foundation, Source Safe, Subversion, uh, JIT, and so on. Okay, so and these are all basically, in addition, you can also merge files, show differences between files and so on. It is support uh, encryption of modules, I, I won't get into too much details of that. You, you have to go into a, a real training to get into those features. Uh, okay, uh, here's some of the automatic versioning that every time file is saved, you can see who saved it and when and so on. So, And you can also limit access to different files if you want to distribute sources to other vendors and you don't want to show them the source uh, uh, code, uh, only the use of it, just the public. Uh, you can use the file encryption and you can use password as well. Uh, a lot of the military uh, system are using that features, especially today with the cybersecurity requirements uh, that are out there. Um, here is a show differences screen. It shows you side by side sources of ATEZ in uh, in uh, text format, and you can see how they uh, what the changes were done. And you can use also the merging tool to merge the changes and so on. Okay, uh, moving on. Test executive. So the test executive, as I mentioned, is basically a driver that you add to your system. It's called testexec.brv. And you can uh, basically, uh, let me show you how that looks. It has a two user interface uh, modes that are built in, modless and modal. One is used for touch screen. Many of the uh, test systems, they are using touch panel. And the user basically taps on the screen instead of using mouse and keyboard. It's much more, uh, especially in manufacturing or production floor. Um, Here's an example of the test executive user interface. Many of the things that you see on the screen here is customizable. You can disable feature. You can remove some of the menus and toolbars. And, and here you can see that uh, uh, on the left side, you, you can show you the program that you're running and all the tests. In this case, this area is enabled. So basically, it shows you that uh, there is a checkbox next to each test which tells you what you want to run. Uh, you can disable that feature. And then when you run it, each test will have a color. If it's red, it fell. If it's green, it passed. And, and when you click on the test, it will scroll the test log here. This is the test log to the test itself. And here you see the test result. And there is also the test log option opened. You can close that. And uh, it shows you for each of the tests, uh, the pin, the unit, uh, min, max. These are min, max tests. They're different types of tests. And then you can see uh, the result. And each of the result has a little bar. It shows you where it is within the range. 
and you can activate that feature or hide it if you don't need that. And it's very useful when you want to see which tests are barely passing, and then you can uh, also filter the results for this, and you can uh, figure out which tests are barely passing, and maybe you can improve those tests. Any question about the test executive? Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, this is the touch screen user interface for the test executive. So it's similar, but instead of uh, menus and keyboard and and uh, toolbars, we have large button that you can tap on the screen. Uh, you can see you if you want to select the program to run, you tap here. You want to run it, you tap here. And then once you run, this will show up and show you the test result. If you need keyboard, it will show the on-screen keyboard on the screen, and you can tap on that as well. And okay. Okay, uh, additional uh, debugging capabilities for the test executive. Uh, okay, I think uh, I want to at this point uh, uh, stop and basically do a, a, a live demo because we don't have much time. I wanted just to do a one hour. But there are a few more slides. If you're interested in the uh, a full slide, I will send you the the full presentation, and you can uh, read the rest of the presentation. Uh, from here, let's go on, and I'll uh, um, uh, open ATC and show you a little bit how you actually use that. So I'm just opening ATC. And then uh, as a first application, we'll just go ahead and uh, click New. And we're going to use the application wizard to create uh, an application. So that's a quick way of doing that. So we'll just um, uh, I'll place all the files on the desktop so you can see what they are. Uh, OK. So we'll just select the desktop here, and we'll just say uh, uh, we'll call the the project uh, test system 100 or something like that, and then we can tell him to create a workspace as well with the same name, and then uh, the default should be fine if you want to create a. Um, we'll just include the test executive. We don't need the profile and so on. And uh, we'll just create one program. That's the default program. So we'll call it uh, TSDUT1. OK, that will be our first device that we're going to test. And then this will be our system. And the next, you can add more drivers here from the library. But we will just close it and create. And if I remember, if you remember, I, I mentioned about the creating a um, um, a, 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 work, a framework. So basically, this is what we have created. In a few steps, we can look here. I can close here this window. We don't need that. And you can see this is where my program is. That's where I'm going to put my test. And this is the system. I have only one driver, but I can add more, like here, insert. And then if I just run this program, this will be my hello world. Uh, you can see that the program, by default, it has one untitled test and one test, uh, one task and one test inside. There's no min and max and so on. But we can just run it as is just to see how that works. Uh, so basically what it did, it opened the test executive. And it shows me that I have this program, only one program, because you can see in the program I have just one. And then one test. And if you click on it, you can see that that test doesn't have any min max or requirements. And then if I'm going to run just this program, we'll just hit the Start button. You can see the test log already created. The test log has a, this is the HTML test log. It easy support different types of test log. You can use text-based uh, language, uh, uh, text uh, files test log, or HTML. Um, 
In addition, you can also save the test result to Excel or database or some, uh, you know, XML format and so on. But these are the built-in uh, test type. You can see that it's a, uh, you can place here your company logo. There is a way to customize all, all the things that you see on the screen, including the test report. That's the default that comes out of the, uh, we can go back to the program and let's uh, maybe change the program and just say, okay, let's put, um, let's say this will be a, a 10 volt test. Uh, okay, we'll just, um, okay. And then I can describe here what the test does, uh, uh, this test, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you can set the minimum and maximum. So you would say 9.75 to 10.25, for example. And then the unit you can uh, select here or just type volt. And then if you have a pin that you're testing, like you can type it here, 63. After you type it, it will add it to the list. And then that will be our test. And then here in the program, we would say test result, which is a built-in variable. We would say equal to, uh, let's say, 10.12. Okay. And now we can just go ahead and run that. And you can see we have a pass. And the UT is passed because all the tests were passing. And and that will be an example. Now you can copy this uh, test and maybe duplicate it. And now the second test, we can just say, uh, I don't know, call it, uh, I don't know, 11. And then here, let's make it fail. So we would, let's leave the min and max as is. We'll just do, a, I don't know, 11.23. Okay, so now you can, um, run that program, or we can just do something like that. Uh, we can, uh, instead of that, we'll just do 10.26, uh, okay? So now we'll run it like that, and we'll, okay. So now we have one pass and one fail. You can see also in the tree, you can immediately see which one fail, because it's red, and then, um, you can uh, open here the filtering and you say, okay, just show me all the fail tests. And you can see it filter it and you can see only the failures. Or you can say, show me uh, the result bar and you can see the fail test, it shows you where it is and the passing test, it shows you within the range where it is. So if you have hundreds of tests, it's easy to filter your test result. You can say, okay, show me all the tests within 10% of the, so it will show you because the 26 is within 10% of, uh, you know, 10% of the 0.5. Uh, take the 10.25 minus 975. So the whole range is 0.5 volt. So 10% is, um, you know, up to 10.30 and or 10.2. So it will show you only those tests. So you can go and, and concentrate on working on improving those tests uh, because they're barely passing. You can change here the limit and so on. So this is an example of what the test executive uh, log can do for you. And basically when you save that test log, it actually saves it at, after each run and you can send it to someone else that HTML file, he can open it and he will have exactly the same tool. He can also do that filtering and process. So the, this, in, this whole uh, filtering is uh, going with that test log. You don't have to send additional things with, except from the test log itself. Um, okay, so that would be that. I mean, there's a, a lot of things you can do here. You can, uh, uh, you know, you can pause on failure, you can, loop on tests, you can, uh, you know, and so on. So I, I want to get into more details than that on uh, this particular example. Uh, 
Programming an instrument is basically you go here, you insert an instrument, and you select from our uh, library uh, a driver. Uh, so, for example, let's look at that uh, HP, uh, this one, and basically it insert that driver. Now, if you want to write the program, instead of faking the result, you can just say DMM, uh, you know, set function. Let's say we want a, I don't know, a, a, a DC measurement, and then we can take a, a measurement, and then you can select the variable, and so on. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward writing a program. The program is pretty readable. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, I think in this uh, kind of conclude my um, uh, introduction to ATEZ. It uh, was about one hour. And I'm free now. If you have some questions, uh, I can take them right now. Or if you want me to show you another feature of ATEZ, I can do that as well. Um, okay. I have a, one quick question. Yeah. Hi, it's Larry Goldberg. Um, is there a, a charge for uh, subsequent versions or are those uh, usually uh, free? And uh, secondly, is there a list of uh, included upgrades in each subsequent version? Uh, okay, so when you purchase ATEZ, um, there are three types of licenses. You can buy um, a floating license, which is like a network. It runs on a network server, or you can install it locally, and that one has a, either a software or a USB uh, key. Um, now, the ATEZ comes with one year of subscription, and... Uh, the license itself is uh, perpetual, meaning you you don't have, it won't expire. You, you you can use it forever, um, and then uh, after one year, if you want to continue to receive upgrades or uh, 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 receive support from us through our magic portal, then you have to renew your subscription. So the basic license comes with one year. And then after one year, if you want to continue to receive free upgrades, so if we release like version 11, it will come free if, if you have a valid subscription, if you have a current subscription. Um, okay, does that answer your question? Now, as far as the features, um, uh, if you go to the help, and I didn't see, uh, so every version that we release, you can see it will have a topic inside the help and also in the readme. So for example, what's new in version 10, you can click on that and it will show you to have a list of all the new features. And for example, in version 10, we added that folder compare, we added the ATZ merge tool, we added the some text editing, we added .NET control so you can see how those properties are set and you can see the controls. Uh, so it's kind of give you idea of all the new features that we have added into the, so this list here is just for this version, version 10. If you go and uh, I believe it, uh, you can see every version here has a what's new and you can actually browse and see what we added in version nine and so on. Is that answering your question? Uh, it answers 90% of it. The last bit, though, if I have a previous version uh, without buying the next version, how can I see what is uh, there that might be of value to me? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. We actually will email you and let you know what are the features before every time we release a version, we send the email to all our subscribers telling them what we have done. This is also visible in our website. So if you go to the ATEZ area in our website and you click what's new and it will have this exact list here that you can browse and see. And uh, okay. Perfect, thank you. Uh, yeah, another thing if I'm here on the website, the website support is done from here. So you basically go to support and this is called magic which actually, you know, our user likes it a lot. They, they use it a lot to ask questions. 
report issues, and so on. In addition, we also have the user forms here where you can see drivers or a general questions. For example, you know, if you open that, so you can see some threading between users and so on. Okay. Any questions? Other questions? About features, uh, if you want to see forms, uh, events, or any other things. Um, okay. Okay, so I think uh, if there's no more questions, we can uh, end this. So I'd like to thank you for joining me on this uh, presentation. So hopefully you like what you saw and um, We'll be hearing from you soon. Thank you.